Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Science Faction. The only show where a scientist, a comedian, and a comedian scientist come together to discuss science. Comedically. Hello, and welcome to Science Faction 505. Science Faction, your weekly corona update. The numbers are as follows for today, November 1st, 2020. Worldwide infected, 46.7 million. U.S. infected, 9.46 million. Worldwide dead, 1.2 million. U.S. dead, 236,000. Remember, we talked about, based on outside numbers, that number is almost certainly much higher in the U.S., closer to 300,000. But this is the official tested and verified death number. All right, our first case, if you're anywhere in the United States, you should already be aware of this. Our infected numbers are higher than they've ever been. And by a lot, we are now getting 100,000 new infections per day. In fact, five times over the past 10 days, if you are hearing this the day it is taped, five times over the past 10 days, according to Reuters, the United States has exceeded its previous single day record of 77,000 cases registered in July, meaning the past... 10 days has been absolutely the worst infection rates that we have seen in the United States. That is crazy. 100,000 new cases a day. That is blowing every other country out of the water, including India, which is, by the way, pretty much a third world country with a billion plus people in it. And yet we, a supposed first world nation, the richest nation in the world, with only 320 some odd million people, are somehow getting way more daily infections. Now, that might be an issue of testing availability or whatever, but the point is we are in a bad, bad place. Why is this happening? That's the million dollar question, because this is a really bad situation right now. Remember, even if this were to stop tomorrow and go down, which it does not look like it's going to, there is no indication that that is the case, we would still see a whole lot of secondary infections from these people and a bunch of deaths, injuries, etc. down the line as this continued to go. So to put it mildly, things are as bad as they've ever been and likely getting worse. The number of patients hospitalized with COVID-19 in the U.S. has risen more than 50% during the month of October to 46,000, the highest since mid-August. So we're just in a really, really bad way right now. Now, again, why this is happening, we're still not sure. You could blame, you know, bike rallies, you could blame gatherings, you could blame this and that, but, and we're going to get into this with one of the other articles, we do know that most of these infections come from a very small number of people. But also, just as a colloquial thing, walking around, I see a ton of people not wearing masks. We have gotten massive COVID fatigue where people have just said, like, fuck it, I'm done, I'm tired, I don't want to wear this mask anymore, I want to go out and hang out with my friends, I want to go to that bar, and it is literally costing people's lives. It's really crazy to watch. Like, I feel like watching some broad historical event like the slow takeover of Austria by the Third Reich and be like, how did that happen? How did you just go from normal people living their everyday lives to people doing the Zig Heil and like getting behind the massacre of giant groups of people? And you're like, well, it just slowly went from a horrible, horrible idea to something slightly more acceptable as time went on. I'm telling you, if you were to suddenly transport yourself to 2019 and tell people, hey, guess what? Tomorrow, a horrible disease is going to wipe through that could kill hundreds of thousands of people. And all you have to do is wear this mask, just put it on. And nobody had politicized it. It was just, it was a virus that is sweeping through. I think when you walked outside the next day, 99% of the people you saw would be wearing masks because they weren't tired of it, it hadn't been politicized, it wasn't a, a virtue signaling thing to not be wearing a mask and, you know, be a proud patriot or something like that. People would just do it because they're reasonable and they would think, I don't want to get this virus and I don't want to transfer it to other people. The weird thing is, we have more information than that. We have a year's worth of that information. We have a year's worth of seeing 236,000 other Americans die, along with another almost million people worldwide. And yet, it makes us want to wear it less. It's a bizarre thing. It's almost like when you're learning to drive and you're so careful and you make sure you use your turning signal every single time and you drive the speed limit, et cetera, et cetera. And then as you go day to day life, even though you see more car accidents and learn about more people who have died, you slowly get laxed in your safety protocol. And all of a sudden you're putting on your makeup and eating while you're driving. And, you know, you might be endangering people's lives. It's kind of what's happening with COVID fatigue. One of the reasons I want to do this podcast is that I hope that this gets to somebody's ears who is like kind of getting tired of this shit, which by the way, I am too. And they go, you know what? 
I didn't want to wear a mask out on my walk today, but fuck that Bobby dude. He really did make a few good points about the number of cases and it's really big and blah, blah, blah. And if one person wears a mask that otherwise wouldn't have, and that one person doesn't get infected as they otherwise would have and does not pass it on to other people as they would have, and then some amount of people down the line live because that person didn't infect it, then this is all worth it. So if you're out there, please listen. I get it if you're tired. I even get it if you were somebody who got so frustrated and fed up that you stopped wearing a mask or stopped social distancing. And what I'm saying is, please start again. It's really important to your fellow people in your country and the world. Some good news, however, is that even though we do have an increase in, a huge increase in infections and a very large increase in hospitalizations, we're not seeing corresponding increases in death rates, which, by the way, if you go all the way back to earlier this year, is something I predicted. If you remember, I told you it will be much better to get this disease in the fall than right now, i.e. when we're doing this in the early spring. It'll be much better to get this in the late fall because by then we know viruses as they go through a population usually become less lethal. We are going to get better at treating it. People are going to get better at noticing it and, and getting treatment earlier, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all of that has proven true. So it is a good sign. The, the silver lining to this cloud is the fact that the corresponding death rates have not increased to the same extent. They are increasing, by the way, just not to the same extent as the infection numbers. And that is because we are getting better at managing this disease. Disease. It also means that, uh, and this is kind of a sad fact of the matter, is when that came through, especially when we weren't prepared for it, it did a lot of damage in places like elderly care facilities, and a lot of the disease has swept through those populations, and now it's infecting younger people, which tend to have lower death rates, but higher rates of infecting other people. So while it's good in the short term, it actually might be worse in the long term because usually if an older person gets it, they only infect, you know, less than one other person. Whereas if a younger person gets it, they can infect many other people, including, let's say, two or three old people. So while that is promising, it may end up just being the ticking time bomb as opposed to we've got this under control. All right, we mentioned this before, article number two. This is out of Science Magazine, and there's another article that looks at super spreader events, whether these are conferences, churches, bars, social gatherings, anything like that. And what they're finding is these are responsible for the majority of transmissions, and super spreaders themselves are. We've talked about this number before. 10% of infected individuals are responsible for 80% of new infections. That means most people are doing the right thing. In fact, 70%, this was the new number that I saw that was fantastic, by the way, which was great. It reaffirmed my, my belief in, in, in America a little bit. 70% of infected people don't seem to pass it on to anybody. They get infected, they get sick, they're like, screw it, I'm going inside. That's fantastic. But it also means that when you drive by a busy bar or restaurant or something like that, you might well be seeing the potential death of many people. And you are certainly seeing the continuation of an infection that could otherwise be stopped. This is voluntary at this point. And we know it is because other countries have stopped it. Look at China. China's overall death rate. Keep in mind, the place where it started, they had the least warning. They have a way denser group of people. Everybody's crammed in there. 1.3 billion people, so they should have four times our death rates. Their entire death rate is like 4,000 people. Yeah, we have 230,000 more dead people than that. That's crazy. Why? Social distancing masks. Again, I've said before, totalitarian government doesn't hurt. But New Zealand doesn't have a totalitarian government. They have zero infections right now. Australia just made it to zero infections. It can be done, right? And I'm not saying that we necessarily could make it to zero super easily, but we could certainly knock 100,000 down. And what it looks more and more like is a very small percentage of people are responsible for most of this. And as I've talked before about on Science Faction, the general show, I think a lot more of this has to do with personality disorders than we give it credit for. People with narcissism, people with sociopathy, psychopathy, they don't give a shit. They don't care. Antisocial personality disorder, all of that. They don't care what they are doing. And so you can't get them to take on social responsibility. And so in situations like that, as we are seeing, I think you do need laws. You need laws where if you're not wearing a mask, you get fined or you get arrested or you get something because you are harming other people because of your personality disorder. Another bright spot, there's a paper in Nature that looks at transmission rates of different aged children and how that might help, you know, our opening up of society later. What they found is there was this thing before where people were saying essentially, hey, schools don't seem to spread this as much. And we found out that that's both true and false. So in studying school exchanges and school openings and stuff like that, we did notice that there is transmission rates, but those transmission rates follow a gradient 
from young to old, very similar to kind of our adult death rates. You know, the younger adults don't really die that much and the older adults die a lot. The same thing happens in terms of childhood transmission rates, meaning young children, infected young children, especially those under the age of 12, are not particularly good at passing it on. They can. Anybody can. Anybody who is infected can pass this on. What we see is high school age kids in schools with infected people tend to pass it on much more than middle school age kids decently pass it on, and elementary school kids pass it on at a much lower rate. That's a very interesting thing. There's a lot of different hypotheses as to what this could be. It could be that there's more mild or asymptomatic cases in younger kids, though mild or asymptomatic kids can still pass it on, so that wouldn't necessarily solve that problem. It could also be something that we see in things like tuberculosis, where the young child's lungs are just not big and strong enough to project a large cloud of air. And so even though those little kids who, by the way, you know, anybody who has kids knows that a eight-year-old is not good at social distancing. They're going to run around and play with each other and jump on each other and stuff. So they're, they're getting into contact, maybe even more so than the older kids. But it could be that they just, their weak little lungs can't put out a large enough plume of it for it to be really infectious unless you're very, very close. And so statistically, they don't pass it on well because let's say we talk about a six foot bubble and I've talked before about how that's not a hard and fast rule. Don't think that just because you're six feet away, you can avoid somebody. But in general, we talk about a six foot bubble around an adult. Maybe that bubble around, a, you know, 12 and under, maybe that's more like two feet. And that's just less likely to be infringed upon as many times with as high a viral load. So, regardless of what the reasoning is, and we do need more studying to look at this, it is great news because that would indicate that at least some segment of our population, even when infected, is much less infectious to other people. And it's kind of good that that's kids because those are also the people it's harder to get to socially distance and wear masks. All right, and we'll top it off with article number four. Live science reports that household transmission rates might actually be way higher than we thought. We've talked before about how a lot of these super spreader events seem to be pushing the virus, whether these are at weddings or bars or churches or et cetera, et cetera. But that, at least according to the studies we have, it doesn't seem to transmit through households as much, which is very interesting. Like, why would that be? You're inside with your family a lot. You're indoors, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it turns out we might have just been fucking up the test. So a new paper came out that looked at 191 people in Tennessee and Wisconsin who lived with someone recently diagnosed with COVID-19. Of those, 102 people became infected within seven days of being enrolled in the study. That makes this almost twice the secondary infection rate reported in the previous studies that we were talking about. So why is that? Is this study off? Well, no, this study was actually had much more detailed methodology and is more likely to be right. In fact, it could be that their much more detailed methodology just caught more people who were sick. However, mathematically, that likely would not account for a doubling rate, maybe a little bit more, but not a doubling. The more likely scenario is this. Those previous studies were done in East Asia. This study is the first one done in America. And in East Asia, when people get sick, this doesn't even have to do with COVID, when people get sick with the flu or a cold, in your own house, you wear a mask. So all these people were complaining about having to wear a mask to like take out the garbage or go walk around their block. In East Asia, when you get sick, it's considered common courtesy. You don't want to get the other members of your family sick. You fucking love them. So you wear a mask. And sometimes when they are around you, then they wear a mask because they know you're sick. Well, it turns out when you do that, you don't have very high household transmission rates. And it turns out that when you're a narcissistic American who doesn't really give a fuck about anything and thinks of a mask as a sign of repression, you don't, and you kill your fucking family members. So we are seeing twice the household infection rates in American studies that we are seeing in multiple East Asian studies. God damn, we should be ashamed of ourselves right now. <laughs> We're already pretty much at time, so I'm not going to dive too much more into any more articles, but I do just want to remind you guys that more studies are coming out that indicate that bad COVID-19 reactions, hospitalizations are highly correlated with low vitamin D levels. Not 100% sure that's causational instead of just correlational. However, I would advise everybody out there to make sure you are not low in vitamin D. And just so you guys know, I am the palest guy you have met. I live in Southern California. I work outside a lot. Now, I do a good job of covering up my skin. However, when I recently had medical issues and went to the doctor and they did my blood work, I was low in vitamin D. So if you can get a hold of fortified milk, little vitamin D gummies, whatever it is, pop a few of those because what the evidence seems to show right now is that low vitamin D and COVID do not mix well. So do whatever you can to keep that vitamin D up. 
and keep your social distancing. Keep wearing masks. Please remember, it's not that this is over. If you're in a, if you're in New Zealand, this is fine. You're, this is over for you. You can just hang out. You've got great government and healthcare system, and you guys have figured this shit out. Same with Australia right now. If you're in the U.S., this is literally as bad as it's ever been. And hopefully, I never have to say this again. I've said this multiple times. 100,000 people per day. Five of the last 10 days have broken every day's successive record of how hot it is. This is like a global warming curve, and this is getting worse. So please, social distance, please wear masks, separate yourselves, don't congregate, especially inside. And if you happen to know any narcissists or sociopaths, just fucking duct tape them to a chair and leave them there for a while because these motherfuckers are ruining this country. All right. I love you guys so much. Please stay safe. Thank you so much for joining us and come on back later this week for Science Faction 506. You've been listening to Science Faction. Wait, that's not right. Right.